started this project, um, I was not the biggest fan of the geese at all. I, uh, I had sort of a bad experience uh, when I was younger. I accidentally stumbled into a, uh, a gosling, um, a group of goslings, um, and uh, the mother goose was not happy with me at all. Um, she ended up chasing me and um, flapping at me with her wings, and it was a very terrifying event, especially since I was a, I was a little young, young lad at the time, and uh, you know, a big 20-pound mother goose isn't. It, it's pretty intimidating. So um, I started out with a little bit of an animosity towards the geese, but ever since beginning to study them, I've. Uh, I began to start kind of respecting them again. I, I think they're interesting and I think they're uh, cool. Canada geese are not all bad. In fact, by the 20th century, overhunting and the loss of habitat nearly caused the species to become extinct. While they were once rare, nowadays Canada geese are spread all across North America and have even been introduced into Europe. They are the most common waterfowl in North America. Here on UMSL's campus, it's no exception. The University of Missouri-St. Louis, located in the Midwest, is a great location for the geese because of the various bodies of water located on the campus, along with the lack of major predators. If you go to UMSL or hang around here for whatever reason, you've probably seen them. They have long, black necks, white cheeks, large, flat beaks, white feet, and a brownish to grayish body with a white belly. Fully grown, they can weigh anywhere from 6 to 19 pounds and range from 2 feet all the way up to 4 feet. The Canada geese fly in a V-shaped formation while calls from overhead indicate a transition into spring or autumn. While typically a migratory species, a subspecies of the Canada goose, called the giant Canada goose, is common throughout Missouri and live here year-round. You can commonly see them here on Umsel's campus, wadding around the various sources of water and feeding on the silt at the bottom. They also spend time on large fields, feeding on the various grasses. Large fields also provide ample vision to view predators and passing Umsel students. They can be found almost anywhere on campus. Personally, I like the geese. I think that they're an interesting and unique addition to our campus. And I also think that they're fun to look at. I mean, they're an actual group of animals that are going about their business, but they're such large groups of them and they pass by that it's so interesting and unique to look at. As long as I'm not harassing them and they're not harassing me, I'm totally okay with seeing them on campus. UMSL is a small college, and anything that gets in the way of a busy college student's journey to class is a problem, including the geese. Geese are frequently oblivious to their surroundings, getting in the way of cars and putting themselves in harm's way. They also like to defecate all over the sidewalks, causing students to maneuver through a battlefield of geese poop. On top of that, some geese can be overly aggressive, potentially causing harm to students here on campus. <laughs> to get a better idea of the general feelings of the geese on campus, we decided to ask the people of Umsel themselves. Oh, I think they're beautiful. Nice addition. They're actually kind of cool. It's pretty peaceful whenever like they're just sitting down. Like, you just get used to it. Um, I don't really care. The geese need to be somewhere. Right? So. I have no problem with the geese. I think it's wonderful that they're on campus. I think they're beautiful. I love to see them fly in the skies. I think the geese are majestic. I think we should make more space for the geese. I have a fondness for the geese. I like the geese. We cook them, so... The baby geese is cute. I'm okay with Canadian immigration. I think they're really good. They are wonderful. <laughs> they're kind of an UMSL trademark. Well, at first, when it first came, it was very nice. and uh, But then, of course, they make a mess. And, uh, in fact, the campus hired people to chase them away. This must be 10, 15 years ago. And they disappeared for a couple of years. And I missed them. And they came back. So I, I accept them now with a mess. 
Not surprisingly, most people here liked the geese. However, there were a few people who strongly disliked them. They're uh, pretty much troublesome, always in a way. I'm afraid to walk by because I'm kind of afraid of geese. They get aggravating at times, more problem than they're worth, but that's just my personal opinion. You get rid of them. I think they need to go away and stop pooping on our sidewalks. <laughs> if I had my preferences, I would prefer that they not be on campus. They're always in the way on the sidewalks when I'm trying to walk. So when I'm trying to walk, I have to walk all the way around because I don't want to walk next to them because I don't know if they're going to attack me. I don't know what. I really don't. They bug me. I hate how much they use the bathroom. Uh, it's disgusting. They're disgusting to me. They really bug me. I'm serious. I really have like a big problem with those things. Like, I would wish they were not like on campus like so much. Like everything about them bugs me. I'm not going to lie. I feel passionately about <laughs> them <cool>. being gone. <laughs> Passionate or not, these interviews only skim the surface. Most people are unaware of what actually happens behind the scenes when it comes to the Northern Canadian Goose on campus. So I decided to ask a more knowledgeable person for their opinion. Oh, I tend to like the geese on campus. I've never had a problem where they've chased me or have done anything um, that I would find problematic. So for the most part, I really like the geese. On the other hand, um, I'm well aware that there are becoming a lot of geese on campus. They create problems for landscaping. Um, they eat a lot of the grass on campus, which at times can leave bare patches. Um, and that a lot of students have conflicts with the geese. Um, they are a messy bird. Um, they're at times an aggressive bird. And so they need to be managed. And so it's how do we get geese managed on campus in a way that their positives are more than their negatives and we can enjoy geese on campus rather than thinking oh I've just stepped in goose poo. I actually love the geese. I, I am a big, I'm a big goose advocate. Years ago the grounds crews were very aggressively um, trying to stop geese from reproducing. And at that time, there were goose nests on lots of the roofs, so that on all the flat roofs, they would be way up there with their nests. And of course, the babies can't fly. When they hatch out, they have to jump down, and that's quite a spectacle. But I know they were oiling the eggs, and so the ground crew would go around, find the nests, and it's a way that essentially slowly kills the embryo, but the adults don't know it, and so they continue incubating it. And the alternative is just to destroy the nest and destroy the eggs. But the problem with that, from a management perspective, is that the geese just turn right around and lay another one. So, so this, this management um, approach of taking the eggs, because all bird eggs have holes in them. They have little pores in them that the embryo essentially breathes through. So there is a gaseous exchange through the membranes through these egg pores. By oiling the eggs, you block all those pores. And it still looks like a normal egg, but it will, the, whatever's inside it will die. Not immediately, but it will. So I came in one day and I was parking out here where there used to be a parking lot out here, and I saw guys up on this roof right here and they were going like this they were you know there was a goose that was going eh, and they were going in for it. they were gonna oil the eggs and I called to them from the parking lot and I said do you have a permit to do that so so they went away and the activity stopped hmm. so clearly they didn't have permits Dr. Parker seemed very concerned about the groundskeepers illegally oiling the geese's eggs to control their population so I had to find out myself after all, who better to ask than the people who take care of the geese themselves? Well, we do have a program that we have been doing for a number of years now. It's uh, where we do geese management, where we uh, addle the eggs and try and keep the population of the geese down. We go, actually, it's us two that do this. Uh, we go out in, uh, what is it, late? Early at the beginning of the year, when they're, 
about April something. Yeah, April and, and check. And it, we use, by now we know where they nest. They usually nest on the corner of every building that had rock on top of it. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they nest on the ground, but it's and very, they nest and they hide very well in some spots. Uh, we, we do know mostly everywhere where they do have nests. Sometimes they do get away when there's new ones uh, that we don't know about. But we've been running this, this program, well, I don't know, 15, 16 years. I've been here 10 years. And when I first got here, I think the guys were oiling on average about 40 eggs a year. We work underneath a, a federal license. And, and, which uh, we still have to have. Actually, one woman at uh, Stadler Hall one year was questioning. I think she called you about this and said, you know, what are, why are they doing this? And, and I'm told them we do, you know, we're doing this legally. The thing is, the cost to the university and this guy's, these guys' labor and the labor that we have washing the sidewalks is in the thousands of dollars, okay, a year, which that takes us away from our main job of campus grounds, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's the other problem. Our main issue is that that's unsanitary. I mean, it could be spreading disease for all we know. And as I said, we do our best on them, but it's far from being 100% clean. You know, people have to walk through that and track it in the building. And it's just, uh, to me, just something that wish could be eliminated. Yes. You can tell, I, I hate them, okay? I mean, it, it's, just, it's just a problem, you know? And, uh, a lot of hours. A lot of hours, a lot of uh, things we can't get done because of it, uh, a lot of complaints, um, you know, as I said, uh, it's just never ending it seems like. I'm so glad when that molting stage is finally over with, which is I guess what, the end of July or so, middle of July. And they're supposed to leave then, but as you can see, they don't. So they're still uh, pretty much here all year long. So. Well, you see why they come here. You've got three, the two little, little ponds. Mm -hmm. that, the bug lake and there's manicured grass, there's grass right. all over, so mm -hmm. they... And then now we got Express Grips Lake, so we're getting, you know, so you're getting, and, yeah, forth, and, it's, you know. and it's a fly zone from mm -hmm. north and south, yeah. so... They're Plus, I always, I think they, they feel more comfortable around people, too. They've yeah. come to the point now, they know people aren't going to hurt them, mm -hmm. and I think they feel more secure because when you got people around, you're not going to have their natural predators like coyotes and things like that so I think that they're a very very smart bird I mean I go around we go around we got air horns on our gators that scare them <laughs> works pretty good but they get used just about everything and but I've actually had them flying over and they recognize this gator and they'll start honking in the middle of the air mm -hmm. because they hate it yeah okay so I mean that tells you they're pretty intelligent you know, Talk of elimination. I mean, no, that's that's not the answer. Uh, they know there's nothing here that's considered a predator to them, so they're not going to leave. It. You're going to have those people that don't want you doing anything, and then you got the other half that wants you doing more. So it's one of those guys. It's, it's thankless. Okay. I don't like I don't like killing mm -hmm. something, but I totally understand why it has to be done. There are things that have to be done. Mm -hmm. While there are many problems that are apparent with the geese on campus, is there anything we can actually do to keep our staff and students satisfied with the continuous migration of the northern Canadian geese to UMSL's campus? No can't satisfy everybody and students are no exception some people they hate the geese some people like the geese I think they have every right to be on the campus just like any other student has but um, because of the differing opinions you can't really have a solution that satisfies everybody but you can do small things to help improve the relationships between the geese and the students. While there may not be a guaranteed method to get rid of the geese completely, there may be some solutions that may be worth a shot. Check out this school solution to get rid of their geese problem. A life-size cutout of their natural enemy, 
the coyote. From the geese from above, it appears that they're holding a goose in their mouth, and that that's a, creates a threat to the geese, uh, and so they don't land here. You can still see some remnants of the goose goo problem close to the ballpark and in the grass, but their playground is clean. People have uh, laughed when I tell them, and, and I'm, I just say, go check it out. You'll notice there's no geese running around on the uh, playground anymore. They are gone. They are miraculously migrating somewhere else. We found a few geese just a couple blocks away near a pond. Bad news for the neighbors, but good news for these kids who can now enjoy recess outside. While this may work, getting rid of the geese on campus would make UMSL a lot less lively. So perhaps we can do something smaller that would allow the geese to stay here permanently. Like a sign, for example. Placing simple signs around campus warning about the geese and giving simple do's and don'ts could possibly save a student from getting an eye pecked out. Many students are oblivious that simple things such as feeding the geese, walking up to them to pet the cute baby goslings, and even provoking the geese are not okay. With signs posted around major geese hangouts, students can not only feel safer, but the geese will certainly feel safer too. Another idea that could be integrated into UMSL's groundkeeping is to plant a geese repellent plant type around sidewalks, pathways, and parking lots, perhaps influencing the geese to stay on the grassy areas or nearest to the ponds instead of in people's way, causing messy sidewalks and extra chores for the groundskeeping department. Some examples of organisms to plant along pathways as fencing mechanisms are big blue stem grass, little blue stem grass, Indian grass, pasta or plantain lily, and ground juniper. Lastly, we can create a student-led organization that meets on a regular basis with the goal of keeping the University of Missouri-St. Louis goose friendly. With funds allocated to student groups by the university, the group can help manage the resident geese through population stabilization, habitat modification, and site erosion. The group could also assist the campus groundskeepers in their ongoing efforts to clean up the geese. The truth is, the geese on Umsel's campus may never go away. So, instead of trying to eliminate them completely, we can instead tolerate them better. With signs on campus, bushes on the sidewalks, and students even helping out the groundskeepers, geese and people can live in peaceful coexistence. If we do these simple things, we can perhaps make UMSL a better place for everyone.